In this video, we're gonna check out what's new with Elementor 3.2. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them down below this video. I try to answer them the best I can. My name is Bjorn Allpass from WP Learning Lab. We will help you get better at WordPress so you can earn more for yourself, for your customers, and for your business. If you haven't done so yet, make sure you click subscribe and ring the bell so you don't miss any future videos. Now let's get started. This blog post is linked in the description down below if you wanna look at it yourself, and it describes everything that is in Elementor 3.2. We're gonna start off looking at the form submissions improvement. And in a nutshell, what it is, it allows you to collect your form submissions in the back end of WordPress. So whenever a visitor submits a form, they might be emailing you, they might be added to MailChimp, they might be added to MailerLite, all kinds of things might happen. But now in addition to that, you can have that information that they submitted stored in your WordPress database so you can see it in the dashboard of your website. To show you how it works, I have created a simple page with a form. It's actually a template page, I didn't create it. It's an Elementor template. This is our form right over here. You need to click on that form. You need to go down to actions after submit and make sure collect submissions is on here. If it's not there, just click in this add action area, choose collect submissions, update, and then go to your form and fill it out. And just fill it out with my name and not a real phone number and an email and hit send. The form was sent successfully. And now on the back end of WordPress, we can see that submission. If you go to Elementor, there's a new menu item under Elementor called Submissions. This is the one we filled in or sent in just a second ago right here. You can click on View to view all the information we have about that. There's an Actions Log, which basically logs whether actions happened or didn't happen. In this case, the actions are whatever's listed in here. So we had the action of email as well as collect submissions. And the email went through successfully, and so we have a green check mark. And if we had any of the other actions that we can choose here set up, that would be added in here in the action log, and there'd be a green check mark if it worked, or a yellow exclamation if it didn't, then you can debug any problems you're having. And this is all the data associated with this contact record with this submission, just name, phone, email, because those are the fields that were on the form. We have another submission here, called bim at bimbim.com. And this form had one more field, which was last name. So however many fields your form has, that's how much data is gonna be entered in here. And there were no additional actions except for logging the submission. So you could have forms on your site and all they do is collect submissions that show up in the back end of your WordPress site. And these submissions go into a separate brand new WordPress table. And so they load faster, they don't impact WordPress load times as much because it's a separate table from all your other WordPress data. If we go back to the submissions table, we also see that we can see which form was submitted. In this case, they're both called new form. If you wanna change that, you just change the form name by making sure you click on the form, going to form fields, changing form name from new form to something more descriptive like contact form or newsletter form, whatever describes the form, then that will appear right here. And it also shows which page the form was on, the title of the page. And if you're finding this tutorial helpful, click the like button because that helps this video show up for more people on YouTube so we can spread the knowledge and help more people with this information. So make sure you click like if you like this video. And you can filter by these two things as well. So if you had thousands of entries, you could look up specific entries on specific pages by just typing in the page name here, in this case, Elementor Pro 3.2. We have one submission from there. So let's X out of that filter. Or we can choose specific forms and only show submissions from that form. And we can also filter by time frame, including a custom date if you want. And these form submissions can be exported as well. There's an export all to CSV button here, which allows you to export all the submissions. Then you can import those submissions to somewhere else if you want to, some sort of CRM that Elementor doesn't currently connect to, like Infusionsoft maybe and then you can have all the data there as well, or you can just keep them safe in your hard drive. Whatever you wanna do, you can export the CSV by clicking this button. And all the data here is also GDPR compliant according to the Elementor blog. If we scroll down a little bit, we see here GDPR compliant because they have support for the native export and erase user tools inside of WordPress, which if you're not familiar, they're over here under tools, export personal data, and erase personal data. And what you'd also wanna do is include a statement on your privacy policy, explaining your submission data collection as it's being collected here. And if you wanna know exactly how to word that, you probably have to visit a lawyer because I'm not a lawyer. So I don't know the exact verbiage you'd want on a privacy policy for a statement like this, but you would wanna put that on there to be completely GDPR compliant. And next, we now have the ability to add PayPal buttons to our Elementor pages. 
If we go to our page, let's just stay on this one right here. Go to our widgets, type in PayPal. Here's our fancy new PayPal button. We can drag and drop that in right here. Maybe they gotta pay for a phone call. There's our buy now button. You just enter your PayPal email address right here. You choose your transaction type, either checkout, donation, or subscription. I believe you have to have a special PayPal account to accept donations and maybe even a special PayPal account for subscriptions. Not every account can handle both of those. So you have to contact PayPal and ask if your account can handle these two things, if those are what you're interested in. And checkout, I think is pretty much any PayPal account can handle checkout, which is just a one-time payment for something. And this button, as far as I know, as far as I can tell at this moment, doesn't integrate with WooCommerce. And so this is just something you'd have for maybe, in this case, a one-on-one -on -one coaching phone call, for example, or buying a, an ebook, or just buying one item on one specific page. You can have different PayPal buttons on different pages, but I don't believe it's WooCommerce integrated at this time. So we can add an item name, like one-on-one -on -one coaching, give it a SKU if we want, give it a price, choose a currency, choose a quantity, choose a shipping price if that's applicable, choose tax if that's applicable, percentage is all you can choose there, and the button itself, we can change the text, we can change the icon, we can change the icon position before or after, and the icon spacing, pretty traditional Elementor type settings. Redirect after success, you definitely want to have a thank you page of the payment went through because people who are paying money want to make sure that it actually worked. So a thank you page would be very important. The sandbox option is test mode for PayPal. So when you're setting this up in PayPal, if you have a developer's account with PayPal, you get a special email address that you can use for test purchases. You would put that in here, then you can test your purchase flow and make sure it all works properly. And you can open PayPal in a new tab when someone clicks on there, and you can have custom messages for errors and PayPal not connected. And of course we have styling options and advanced options. And as far as PayPal buttons go, that's about all there is to PayPal buttons. Even when you create them in the back end of PayPal, that's about all there is. So the options here are pretty thorough. Might be some more for subscription, billing cycle, currency, auto renewal. Might be something else for donation, but probably not. Just a fixed amount or any amount. And as I mentioned, whenever I set these PayPal buttons in my PayPal account, these are pretty much all the options you have in there. So I don't know what else Elementor could really add to make this work, except for integrating it with WooCommerce, which would make things a little more convenient. But of course, there's the WooCommerce PayPal checkout buttons already. So I'm not sure if that's required. But anyway, the new PayPal widget is a welcome addition if you want to have checkout buttons on specific pages that aren't tied to WooCommerce. Or if you don't want a full WooCommerce site, you can still have checkout buttons integrated really easily using this new widget. The last big update in version 3.2 for Elementor Pro is the sticky intersection, which is pretty cool. It solves a lot of problems that you guys have had with designing and adds some new features that I think can make your sites a whole lot cooler. And what it essentially does, it makes items sticky. So they scroll down with the visitor on the page, but then you can make them stop at the end of the column. What I mean by that, is I have this example page right here. This is another Elementor template that I just loaded up. This is the original section that I changed a little bit to have more space. So I had more space for each of these points. So they're spaced out more so that we have space for this phone here to scroll down with us to illustrate this new effect. And what you have to do to make this work, if you have, you have to add intersection. So let's go to our widgets, choose intersection, drag and drop that wherever you want this effect to happen. Delete the second column. So there's only one column in there. And then move whatever it is that you want to have sticky and follow you down the page into that intersection column. And that's what we have to do to get set up. And now click on the six dots to go into section settings. Go to advanced, go to motion effects, and then turn on sticky. Choose either top or bottom. In this case, I'm gonna to choose top. And then right away, you'll see the phones following us down. As we keep going, the phone comes with us. And this is where you'd use Z index so we could hide it behind other elements. So we could change the Z index for this one just to be something higher. So let's make this one. And then change the Z index for this section to be zero. So it's less than the one below it. Now if we scroll down 
this guy, the phone goes behind that section. Then we have to change the Z index for all the sections to be higher than that initial one, the zero, and that would be fine. That's a pretty cool effect as well. But now with this new sticky effect, what we can do is have the phone stop at the bottom of the column. Go to motion effects again. Under sticky, we chose top. Down here, we choose stay in column. And now when we get to the bottom of the column, which is right here in this case, the phone just stays there. So it scrolls with us the entire way and it stays in the column. So that's pretty cool. If you don't want it stuck right to the top, you can add an offset. It's gonna make this 100. And now when we scroll down, once it's 100 pixels from the top of the page, that's when it'll start scrolling and it'll stop again at the bottom of that column. We can also add in other motion effects. So if we wanted to add in scrolling effects, like a vertical scroll, for example, we can have kind of double parallax. So it's scrolling down the page with us, but it's also scrolling up a little bit as we go. It's got a double parallax effect. The example they showed on the release video was rotate. So as you scroll, you can have the object rotate, which is pretty cool. Let's turn off the vertical scroll. So depending on what it is that you're making, these motion effects can be pretty awesome. You could have when you scroll down here, you could have something pop up from behind this section and then rotate across or any number of things. Really, your imagination is your limit in this case. But that sticky effect will definitely solve a lot of problems and it might help you to rely less on the Z index. The only thing I'd be concerned about is mobile and tablet. So make sure you design there first, or if you don't, make sure you test it thoroughly to make sure this function is working as it should, or just turn it off for the mobile devices, or just turn it off for the mobile devices. Anytime there's a new update to Elementor, I know what you're thinking. There's more features, which means more code bloat, which means slower websites. Well, we might've figured out how to speed up Elementor sites for good. Check out this tutorial up here, and then this one down here to help you improve the speed of your Elementor-based websites by a lot. Those videos will be very helpful to you. And if you haven't done so yet, make sure to click subscribe and ring the bell so you don't miss any future videos. My name is Bjorn Allpass from WP Learning Lab. Until next time, keep crushing it, and I will see you in the next video.